All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, that's a, that's a very U.S. centric comment. I should apologize for that. If you're across an ocean somewhere or on the other side of the globe, welcome. Glad I'm glad that yes. you're joining us. It uh, it's morning yeah, in, in <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. Um, if you're joining us from the U.S., it's certainly morning for you. So we're glad that you're here. Um, just stopping in this morning to say that. The Entree Architect Community Annual Meeting is coming up November 1st through 3rd in Austin, Texas. And if you haven't heard about it before, if you've not uh, attended, been a part of one of these conversations before, the annual meeting is the business conference for entrepreneur architects. In fact, it's the first ever live conference that's dedicated just to small firm entrepreneur architects. I know that November sounds like a long time from now. If Honestly, it feels like a long time from now, but the conference is going to be here before you know it. So what I've done is I've started a live stream series to introduce you to all of the fantastic speakers that will be at the conference. And then they'll all be back to give you a little teaser about their talk. So it's a two-part series, basically, with each of our speakers. So again, good morning. My name is Jeff Eccles. If we've never met before, I'm the Director of Brand Strategy for Entree Architect. We're the world's largest worldwide community of small firm architects. I'm also the host of Context and Clarity Live. And to continue our Meet the Speaker series today, I'm joined by someone who's been a past guest on Context and Clarity Live. It's He is an incredible human being. Uh, I am always at awe at uh, what he's doing and how much he's doing. Uh, we'll get we'll get into that here in just a minute, and I think that he's someone that you could benefit from knowing. But rather than me rambling on more through some sort of introduction, let me just ask, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> well, thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. I appreciate you and the whole Entree Architect community, Mark LePage, and everybody that's uh, out there uh, making things happen on a regular basis for design firms and, um, and helping them to serve the world the way that they do. And so I, um, my name is Randy Wilburn. As you said, uh, I am the owner of Encourage, Build, Grow. We are a consulting firm focuses primarily on leadership development and marketing. And then the marketing space is where I, I really focus on in the area of storytelling and podcast strategy consulting and um, and where the two meet. And so what I try to do is I, I, I work with a lot of design firms to help them tell their stories a little bit better, um, to help them catalog and, and, and categorize their stories, if you will, and create um, a, a kind of a, 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 a book of stories that they can then, uh, that everybody in the company can utilize as they go out and extend their brand to the world or if they're trying to personally or professionally develop their team internally, storytelling is a way to do that. And so I have, uh, I mean, there's there's nothing new under the sun, right? And so I, I, sure. I think that um, the whole idea is just to get people a better framework through which to tell stories, because it shouldn't just be a couple of people in the corner um, office, you know, a, you know, one or two of the leaders of the organization that know all the great stories. Everybody should know all the great stories. It helps you to extend mission, vision, values of your organization. It helps you to uh, engage clients um, and customers. It helps you to build the next generation of talent that's coming through your pipeline in your organization. So it, it is, um, it is, you can ignore it at your own peril. Uh, but if you, if you don't, if you embrace it, it can make, it can be a difference maker for you and you will have a much more engaged community that wants to work with you as well as an engaged, uh, base of, uh, employees or colleagues that are working with you uh, on your team. Yeah, I love that. I mean, as as a the idea of storytelling as a tool, and I, I love the you know you're sort of you know the way I'm picturing it is you're sort of talking about it in two different directions. You're talking about the external and the internal, and yeah. and using story and storytelling for in in both directions. Um, I love that. Let me take just a second to say hello to some of our uh, audience here. Scott Thrift, welcome back. Scott's in San Francisco. He's an architect in San Francisco. Um, he is uh, a regular around context and clarity. Uh, good morning to you, Pradeep. And I'm, I'm going to say Dina. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that 
right, but uh, as is my custom, I probably butchered that, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, welcome back from Boston. And Chris Novelli, yeah, you did catch us. Uh, Chris is over in Massachusetts as well, not right, that far right. from where Sophia Thank you all is. For coming out today. Yeah, great, great to have all of you here. W- let me just say one thing: if you are joining from Facebook right now, I see Chris is over on Facebook. Um, you may be on Facebook sort of commenting away going, hey, why isn't my comment showing up on the screen here? That is probably because you're joining from a private Facebook group and there's privacy policies and we're, um, Randy and I are outside of Facebook right now using a, a platform called Restream. So if you are commenting away and your comments aren't showing up, I just dropped a URL at the bottom left of the screen. It's chat.restream.io slash FB, like Facebook. And um, if you type that into your browser window, a couple of clicks later, you can give Facebook permission to allow your comments out. So if that's if that's the case for you, if you're commenting away and it's, it's not showing up, just go to chat.restream.io slash FB and you can solve that problem. Adam, welcome. This <laughs> is my guy, Randy. So you've got right. your fan Adam's club good, is showing up. Guy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm coming down to Excellent. Dallas to see you, man. So... <laughs> Awesome. It's great to have all of you with us. And, and please, if you know, we're, this is going to be a relatively short conversation, but if you've got a question or something related to what we're talking about, drop it into the comments and we'll try to address it in the, uh, in the time that we have here. So welcome to all of you. Um, Randy, you were just talking about using, using storytelling as a tool. Again, yeah. external marketing, business development, internal, whether it's leadership development or culture or um, you know, like you, like you said, mission, mission, vision, and value, um, and working with design firms using storytelling as a tool, what's your sweet spot in terms of the, the type or location or size of firms? Who who are you working with on, with these types of projects? So in this case, I actually work with firms, both big and small. I haven't worked with as many of the smaller firms as I have larger firms, right? I think larger firms, typically you would think, oh, they have budgets for this and they've got large marketing departments and, you know, their whole goal is to figure out how to extend their brand on every platform. But I honestly think small design firms need to be thinking that way too, for two Mm -hmm. reasons. One is, A, your story matters and you need to tell it early and often. Right. Right. And that doesn't mean that um, your your website is only one way to tell your story. Uh, Mm -hmm. If you're if you're doing videos, which most design firms, smaller design firms probably aren't doing videos, then you've you've missed out on that channel. And in my mind, one of the next best platforms to um, embrace is podcasting. And so this whole Mm -hmm. idea of storytelling is mated with the platform of podcasting, which naturally has grown as a phenomena, as a source of gaining information and insight and knowledge and entertainment. And nowadays, I mean, I think one third of the US population, it listens to podcasts on a regular basis, that number is only going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my thing with smaller firms is that you need to figure out a way to encapsulate your stories because we all have them. Every, every company has an origin story. Every company has, um, you know, a, a, uh, crisis management story, right? How did you overcome a challenge with a client? Every story, every company has a, a story of, of successful wins that they've achieved in the marketplace. Uh, every company has a failure story. Um, and then it, it just goes on and on. But when you look at the, the, the way stories are told, they're, you know, like Disney got it right, right? He took some of the classic story themes and just repurposed them different in different ways. Mm -hmm. Like Cinderella has been told in so many different ways. And sometimes you're not even aware that you're watching a Cinderella narrative. But, you know, this whole idea of the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell talked about that. We all are moved by stories. It's 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 one of the oldest functions as a society that we've embraced. They were telling stories on cave walls and now we're telling stories with a mic uh on yeah, on the air yeah. as well as, you know, through um, means like a podcast. Yeah, I I love that. And you know, it so Chris first of all, Chris yeah. says um <laughs> that he's had clients find him through his podcast, which is awesome. Say it loud, Chris, for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there so, you go. Yes, there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So th- there's wow. a great example. Um, and, and to, you know, th- so for those of you that don't know, 
um, the the relationship or or the the timing that we're talking about is completely coincidental. Yesterday on Context and Clarity Live, we had Mark Zweig as our guest. Randy knows Mark really well. Um, today I'm talking in this introductory to uh, Randy Wilburn, who has also been a, a as Chris points out a Context and Clarity Live guest. So when you're talking about companies telling their story and using podcasting to tell their story, one of those coincidental, you know, in terms of the timing here, connections is the Zweig letter, right? The, the podcast is Zweig letter that, that you have hosted. I don't, I don't even know. I mean, you're over, you're into the hundreds. Yeah. Episode 210 was released just yesterday. I interviewed Chad Kleinens to talk about the Elevate AEC program in Las Vegas, Nevada next month, the 14th to the 16th. But anyway, that podcast was a game changer, both for me and for Zweig. For me, it was a thing where I had been involved in podcasting since 09. So I've been doing this for a while, but the Zweig Letter podcast was was me putting some intentionality behind the fact that I saw the benefits and value of storytelling through a podcast. And so, you know, and 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 again, you know, I tell people all the time, sometimes you just have inauspicious starts, right? Where um, oh, sure. you, you, you'll just like, I, I literally just had Mark Zweig reading his articles and he wrote some great <laughs> articles. I mean, Mark, Mark right. is a phenomenal writer. And so I would literally just have him read articles, but then it morphed into he and I having conversations. Then it morphed into me interviewing other people that wrote for this white letter. And then it just took on a life of its own. And so, you know, you look back and a lot of times people feel like, oh, I've got to have this perfect program set up. And, you know, sometimes you just have to get behind the mic and press record and the rest will work itself out. I mean, Jeff, you experienced that doing what you're doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. There, was a, there had to be a genesis of all of this, right? Mm-hmm. And when you first started, we were talking about this before we hit record and before we press, press play, but you talked about, you know, some of the the hiccups and challenges of live of producing live events. It's not easy, but, you know, people are forgiving. And even with a podcast, yeah. people are forgiving. But I just encourage people to really consider uh, the stories um, that matter to them and the stories that really move them to do what you do. Most of the things that you purchase are purchased because of storytelling. And why should a, a design of a building or a school or a hospital or you fill in the blank any project that you can think of, why should it be any different when it comes to that? And so yeah. I'm really, I mean, I'm, I, I feel like I'm in the early phases of this because, you know, there are a lot of people that are just like, well, how do I get a podcast? And so I pick up their iPhone mm-hmm. if they have one and show them the little purple icon of the microphone and say, this is where your podcast lives. And everybody ha- yeah. that has a smartphone has access to any of uh, any podcasting platform that they want t- to utilize, be it Spotify, Apple, uh, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, it doesn't matter. You know, you have platforms to access on these devices, which we all carry yeah. around uh, in our pockets. And um, so there, there really is no excuse, but I, I, I'm, I'm gonna just say this one thing, and it's that, it's that when companies, they start thinking about, oh my gosh, but you know, how am I, I mean, I, I look at people like Joe Rogan and all these, you're never gonna be Joe Rogan. So let's just let's just finish that and and not yeah. worry about it, right? Because yeah. people ask me all the time, well, how many people listen to the podcast or how many people, you know, am I going to reach an audience of thousands? No, maybe you'll only reach an audience of 500. But I can guarantee any person that's listening to this or anyone that will listen to the replay later. If I told you tomorrow that if you created and started telling some stories through a podcast and that you could share it out and you'd have a regular audience of 3 100 to 500 people listening to that podcast. That's the same as me inviting you into an auditorium somewhere where you sit down at the front of the stage and you have a captured audience listening to you talk, right? And the the thing is that sometimes people don't realize that because they're thinking, well, if I'm not getting thousands of downloads, then it's, you know, it's all for naught. And the best 1% of 1% of podcasts average 32,000 downloads a month. So you do the math. The, the top yeah. podcasts in the world only get about 380,000 downloads a year. Yeah. So anytime you talk about like a Joe Rogan or any of these other anomalies that are out there that are doing great things with podcasting and getting a million, I have a friend that gets a million downloads a month on his podcast, wow. but that's, 
that's a whole different ball game. And that's not yeah. what I'm suggesting here. I, I, you know, we all have our own little markets. This is a niche market, small mm -hmm. firm architects and yep. architectural community. And this is a niche. And so, but, but you, this niche serves a, a wide variety of the marketplace. And why shouldn't you be telling your stories as often as possible to the yeah. widest audience possible that you can reach? Well, and if I can put it another way, you know, here's, here's my challenge to people out there, right? If, if three to 500 people being on stage in front of a captive audience of three to 500 people, uh, weekly, monthly, you know, whatever, whatever your, your, uh, your schedule is, what are you doing in terms of marketing and business development today? that is targeting three to 500 people on a, on a consistent basis. It's not going to networking events. It's not having coffee meetings. It's not having lunch. It's, it's none of those things because those are one-on-one, -on -one, you know, maybe one to a handful if it's a networking meeting. Um, th that's, that's some different math there, right? When you, when you have an audience like that. So I think that's a, uh, I think that's a great way to look at it. And, and you're exactly right about the the growth, and Chris Chris is echoing some of this too. He's, he's yeah. uh, you know, he two, accidentally published an unedited version and didn't realize it for two years. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it 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 really is, and 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 you know, two hundred to three hundred downloads per episode is great, Chris. Um, you know, a lot of times when people hear those numbers, they think, oh, that's not much, but just this is the beauty of voice of sound and audio is that, you know, just think about how you listen to your, your, your um, I, iTunes on your phone or whatever device you listen to your music, Spotify, be, be that as it may. When you put those headphones on, it becomes a, a real intimate conversation between you yeah. and whoever you're listening to. So whether it's, um, you know, uh, the Rolling Stones, whether it's Sting, one of my favorite musicians, uh, or your favorite jazz band, uh, um, uh, uh, John Coltrane, whatever it is, just think of that intimate connection that you have. It's the mm -hmm. same thing with podcasting. So Chris, when you're doing the 200, 300 downloads, you are in those people's heads, you're creating earworms for them. You're providing them with ideas and encouragement or, or, or sharing some of the work or challenges that you've overcome. And, and so, and yes, it is also brand authority. It is, it, yeah. it, it serves a multitude of purposes. And now, now I want to say one last thing, Jeff, about this is that, cause the funny thing is I'm not even talking about this at this event, which is, which is funny, <laughs> it's, but, but, That's all right. but, but, but it's important for people to understand this. And, and I will get into the, the context of my conversation, um, that even if you just simply, simply, uh, put a podcast out there just to tell the story of your organization, to talk about your brand. It actually helps you from a marketing and business development perspective to reinforce who you are and you get to go through that process on a regular basis, right? And so we we, we almost are allowed to take uh, the Mr. Toyota approach to, to uh, de development, you know, that Kaizen approach of just mm -hmm. consistent improvement. And as you do your podcast, as you learn new things, as you gain insight within your profession, uh, within your career, you're then able to share that information. And then the other side of it is, what's one of the biggest challenges that this industry faces? Recruitment and retention. And what better way to attract great young talent, yeah. because young people great listen point. to podcasts, is to create a podcast that tells the story of your brand and your organization and why you're different, even if you are a shop of 20 people. Because A, yeah. you don't know who's listening. And I can guarantee a, a, a firm as small as 15 to 20 people, if you create good content, which is not that difficult to do if you follow a storytelling framework, you will have people listening to it. And mm -hmm. you'll also attract people that that identify with your mission, your vision, your values. And it's much easier to convince them to say, you know what, I think I want to go work at that shop. I think working with Chris is going to be amazing because, you know, they they get it and they're you know, they're not a huge firm. So I'm not just going to be a number. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No shade against ginormous companies, but in a smaller company, you know, it's kind of like cheers, right? Everybody knows your name and it's important Norm. for you to be able to embrace that. <laughs> yeah.
Well, it, that, that's so true. When, when I talk about brand, I like to think about a triangle because a lot of times when we think about brand and Chris mentioned, it's building brand authority as, as you pointed out a minute ago, when we, when the reality of brand is that usually you're thinking about it in terms of marketing and business development, but there's actually three sides to it. There's your marketing and business development brand, but there's also your brand as an employer. And there's your brand on the operations and the, the client experience side. And, you know, what you're saying about the re- retention and, and recruitment of future employees is so powerful because you have this brand as an employer. Uh, what about telling these the story about what it's actually like to work here? Um, the impact that you have as, you know, working here and our projects and things like that. I think that's an, that's an excellent point. Um, and you, you mentioned the continuous improvement. You've got a poster on the wall behind you <laughs> yeah. that says get 1% better every day. What's better that all about? Every day. <laughs> so, um, and, and, you know, again, I, I got that idea um, and I got that in, encouragement when, when I read the first time. I think I've read Atomic Habits by James Clear three times. I think I listened to the audio book once. Um, phenomenal book. Anybody that's listening to this, that's that's maybe you've been under a rock designing and creating for everybody else and haven't had a chance to edify yourself, go get that book when you get a chance or go to the library and pick it up. So I'm a big, big proponent of libraries, but um, get that book and read it when you get a chance. But but James talks about getting 1% better. It's also along the lines of just Mr. the, the Kaizen approach to business, right? Just consistent improvement. But getting 1% better every day allows you the understanding that when you set out to create routines and habits for your life that will make a difference for you both on a personal level as well as a professional level that these the growth that you experience it it can happen in in increments as small as just one percent tiny changes and the minute that you start doing that you know you push push the plate away from the table after after one serving, right? I'm I'm a I'm a two serving guy sometimes because my wife can burn. So, and I don't mean it in a bad way. She can really cook. So I have to I have to now I've trained myself where I I eat from a smaller plate, right? Because the optics it's just it's just easier. So yeah, I'll have two smaller plates, which is equal to technically one plate. So in that way, I still get two servings, but in reality, I'm really having one. I've just kind of gamed the system. But what it, you have to utilize. Um, uh, systems and, and, and habits that will help you benefit. And that actually is a perfect uh, movement or segue into the conversation that I am going to have uh, because Mark LePage and I had some great conversations on uh, the podcast. And we and we talked about routines and I talked about how important routines and habits are. And uh, I'm going to do a conversation that I've been doing for a couple of years, specifically with design professionals for the most part, but I've also done it in other uh, with other groups. But uh, we're going to be talking about the role of routine and how do you build strong habits for an even stronger workforce. Um, and, and, and that's like your team, right? Because if I'm leading a team of, of architects and I'm an architect and I've got 15 to 20 people, I, wanna, I want to get the best out of them, but I also want them to have the tools necessary to be the best. Right. It's a, it's one thing for me to build them up and, you know, coach them along and, and give them advice and encouragement. But it's a whole nother thing for me to just to give them the tools necessary to be successful. And one way that I think design firms of all sizes can be successful is is making sure that they're taking care of their people. And one what better way to take care of your people, but to ensure that they are taking care of themselves. And we all know this, that in the design industry people tend to burn the candle at both ends to use that illustration. And it is, it is the kind of thing that is dangerous. And I think that um, if anything, the pandemic has caused us to kind of step back a little bit and, and, and reevaluate things on yeah. so many different levels. And one of the best things I think people need to be reevaluating right now is how they work, um, the time that they put in. And so when, with the role of routine, I talk about a couple of core areas that, that, that we all deal with, which is sleep, um, which is your workout routine and the habits around that, the food that you eat, 
um, the time that you spend with yourself, especially in the morning, how you develop a morning routine that will will stick and will last. And uh, and then then I talk about some of the skill sets of leaders, right? And everybody on that's listening to this is a leader, but do you have all the skill sets necessary to really call yourself a leader? And some of them are as simple as journaling, uh, taking the time to write and reflect and 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 process what you're doing. Um, are you taking the time to read? Of course, we know leaders are readers. So there are a number of aspects of things that I need to remind people of and encourage them that it's never too late um, to pick up a habit of reading. It's never too late to pick up a habit of journaling. Um, you'll probably find that, that uh, you'll process information better. You'll serve your clients better when you take care of yourself from that perspective. And, and I don't have to mention sleep, but it's one of the biggest challenges that we have. I, I wanna say more than 50% of the US population uh, struggle with some form of insomnia, which is insane, mm. but it's true. Yeah. And we, we go to bed too late and we, and, and we don't get up um, at the times we should be. And um, the, the other issue that I think we struggle with is that we don't know our chronotype. If, you, if you've ever heard um, Dr. Michael Breas talk about it, um, uh, Daniel Pink talks about it in his book, When, which is timing is everything. And a lot of it is goes back to how we are physically wired. And I don't think we all understand why we do certain things. Some of you are, are, are late night people, and that's just how you're wired, which is fine. Some of us are really early morning risers. I mean, like crack of dawn before the sun even comes out risers. Some of us really like to get, you know, we can't function before 7 a.m. It's just what it is. And and so, which is where a majority of the population is. But I think just understanding some of these things about ourselves from a scientific perspective actually helps inform how we make plans for how we go ahead to, how, do, how we try to improve our, our daily activities and what we do both at work and at home. So it's routines and habits are, are really really, really important. And even before you get to goals, you have to build strong habits. You have to build systems. I think systems are even more important than goals because it's hard to achieve goals without having a strong set of habits and routines that follow a systematic process. So so I know it, we won't get too technical with it, but, but um, I, I have a lot of information to share that will encourage you to, to, make, to make different steps uh, in your daily life and, and just, I think even incremental differences, even just working on things 1% at a time, you'll see improvement uh, at the end of the day, because even 1%, if you, if you just get 1% better every day for a year, that's 37.5% improvement over the year. And so, uh, and I don't really do public math, so don't quote me on that, but it's around <laughs> that. So, you know, that that's the idea of it, but, but it's still improvement. Nonetheless, if I told each and every one of you that you'll be 37 and a half percent better a year from now than you were today, we'd all sign up for that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause this idea of, Absolutely. Oh, I want to get a thousand percent better. That's, that's not realistic, but 37% better. You can do that by focusing just 1% a day. Yeah. That's excellent. That's a great snapshot. Um, Randy will be back on October 7th for a little bit of more of a preview on his talk. Again, this is what we're doing with all of the speakers for the Entree Architect Community annual meeting is giving you basically a two-part series, an introduction to who they are and what they do with a little bit of a teaser about the talk that they'll present at the conference. And then uh, the second time when they come back again, again, Randy will be with us October 7th. You'll get a little little bit more of a preview of the talk. And I think you can see from what Randy was just saying, uh, yes, this is a conference for small firm entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial architects. It's not just about accounting, right? It's not just about project management. It's also about improving yourself so you can improve your business. So yeah. um, there he is, Randy was chief encourager. Jeff, can, can I just yeah, go answer ahead. One, yeah. one question? Sophia yeah. Panova, I totally hear you. She's, she's, um, um, she's, she's got a nine month old son. She's just wondering whether, what, what her, what my advice would be for some, a firm of one. She's just starting out. I totally get that. I don't know that I would necessarily start a podcast as a firm of one unless you just feel like you've got some stories to tell. I would say this. You need to have all of your stories cataloged. Why did you go into architecture? 
Why are you, you know, why are you um, a, a solo practitioner? Those stories are important. And actually those stories um, go a long way at informing um, the different stakeholders in the community that you serve, as well as those potential clients. So I think you need to be thinking about that and, and understand the story behind it, right? Because a lot of times you think, oh, well, nobody's going to care. I'm just, you know, I'm just a solo architect, but that's not true. And I, I bet you, Sophia, you've got a really interesting story about why you got involved with architecture to begin with. Um, we all we all know the stories of women in architecture. So, I mean, I'd be leaning heavily on that, but I would start cataloging your stories now so that as you grow, you'll already have a lexicon of stories to fall back on. And then when you're ready at some point in time, you may want to start pressing record and put a podcast out there. But but yeah, I mean, don't think of it that way. Just it's just um, it may not be right now to do it. But still would still wouldn't uh, I still would encourage you to start cataloging your stories so that you know them and that other people know them because they can appreciate it. And somebody can say, hey, you need to meet this Sophia, man. She this is why she got involved in architecture in the first place. And she just mm -hmm. designed that for me. And now, you know, you make it easy for people to tell your story and then it just runs with it from there. And I, I'm going to I mean, I could go on and on about that. And maybe we'll have to do another session where, where we talk about storytelling from that perspective. But it's super, super valuable. So. And you're yeah. welcome, Sophia. Yeah. And and if I could piggyback on that, I, I, you know, I'm taking a little bit of a tangent here, but um, we have context and clarity conversations every weekday at 4 p.m. Eastern. We have been since the beginning of of the pandemic, and what we have learned, um, you know, relative to what you're talking about, right, mom with a a nine month old, um, you know, just just starting your own thing. There, we're hearing more and more from our community that there are architects, many of them sole practitioners, that have a particular situation, mom with a nine-month-old, or now stay-at-home dad who's, all, who's practicing architecture while also uh, taking care of two or three kids, you know, what, whatever. Uh, architects that are, um, you know, three years into the renovation of their own home right? You know, any of that, those are places where they're finding that clients identify with them and connect with them, right? There's somebody else out there that's got a nine month old son that's looking for an architect or nine month old child that's looking for an architect. That's all of a sudden going, oh my gosh, I really resonate with Sophia because, you know, this is the perspective that she's coming from, right? This is her, 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 uh, uh season of life right in, in where you are. So I, I'm a hundred percent behind what Randy's talking about here. Tell you, tell your story and tell it, tell, you know, as open and transparent as you feel comfortable with, but, uh, that's, that authenticity is going to resonate with, um, with the, the people that you need to connect with. So, um, yeah. I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you. And thanks for, for flagging that there, Randy, and, and, no, no uh, make sure no that we addressed it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, great, great, uh, great to have all of you uh, here for this conversation today. Uh, thanks for all of your your comments and your questions here. All right, Randy Wilburn, he's the chief encourager that wants you to get one percent better every day. His firm is Encourage, Build, Grow. He'll talk about the power of routine at the Entree Architect Community Annual Meeting in Austin, Texas, November first through third. Uh, if you own a small firm, if you're like Sophia, you just started your own firm, maybe you aspire to own your own firm, or even if you're working as the employee of a small architecture firm, go over to entrearchitect.com slash annual meeting. So annual meetings, two words, right? But smash them together like they're one. It's in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen now, entrearchitect.com slash annual meeting to learn more about the conference, to learn more about all the speakers, including Randy. Uh, again, it's the first ever live conference that's dedicated just to small firm entrepreneur architects. So check it out. I promise that you won't be disappointed. Uh, I've gotten to know Randy a little bit. Again, he's been a guest on Context and Clarity Live. I love having these conversations with him. He obviously exudes passion for what he does and how he does it. So um, you won't be disappointed if you just show up to meet Randy. I'm just saying, just saying, um, meet it, meet us down in Austin in November. Randy, thanks a lot. Thanks for this uh, this conversation. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, thank you yeah. uh, Sophia, Adam, Chris, all of you guys. Thanks for, for tuning in and everybody that's tuning in afterwards. We hope to see you in November in Austin, Texas. I will be there the first to the third. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to you being back for a little bit more of a preview about the talk as well. So everybody yes, out there um, will hear more about uh, schedule and routine, getting 1% better when Randy comes back on, uh, what, what did I say, October 7th. Um, yes, so exactly. look forward to that. Yep. Yeah, All right. Perfect. Okay. Great. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Um, right. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you. See you soon. Thanks.